let's talk about hair, a subject I am clearly an expert in. But more specifically, my attempts to sculpt it on my miniatures in Blender. I'm constantly trying out new skills and techniques to help make my miniatures, and bring the rest of the Deluvian world to life. So every time I make a new character, I make a habit of trying out one or two new ones. For my most recent miniature, the Scavenger Huntress, I knew going in that I would probably need a better way to sculpt hair in Blender. Up until this point, I had been using the relatively easy method of adding in a sphere, mushing it into place, and sculpting on a few minor details. This was fine for my first few models, since most of the hair was short or covered, and all of it was meant for a 28mm miniature. But for this character, I wanted those long luscious locks that would remind me of my youth. So. To make that happen, I did a little research and stumbled on the path object in Blender. This basically allows you to create a nice smooth shape that you can bend and twist into position. And in the end, I got some pretty nice results, but with a few caveats. Let's take a look. As usual, our miniature started out the way all miniatures come into this world, bald as a cue ball. And she stayed that way for most of the block out process, while I added in the main parts of her outfit. This step is basically the same for most of my miniatures, so I'm not going to talk about it here, but you can check out my older videos for some of those details. Eventually, I blocked out her hair the old fashioned way, mostly as a placeholder until I was ready to add in more detail. With that in place, I had the strength and courage to go back and finish out the rest of the model. Finally, it was time to try out my new technique. I'll admit, using the path tool was a little daunting at first, since it's pretty different from what I usually do in Blender, but once I got the hang of it, it turns out it's pretty simple. First, we need to add a path to the scene. While in object mode, press Shift A to bring up the menu, then under Curve, select Path. Go ahead and drag it over to the side so you can see it better while you're working. Next, we're going to follow the same process, but this time under Curve, select Circle. Be careful, this is not the Mesh Circle. Then move it over as well, and rotate it to see it clearly. And as far as I can tell, the orientation doesn't really matter, but it's helpful to have it lined up with the axes. Select the path again, go over to the Object Data tab, scroll down to Bevel, and choose Object. You should see the path turn into a cylinder. Oh, and while you're here, save yourself a major headache and check the Fill Caps button, unlike this guy. Now, with our circle selected, we can go into Edit Mode and adjust the points to change the surface of our path. We can move them around and rotate them to affect the shape of the curve, and we can scale them up or down to affect the sharpness. To add detail to your curve, you can select two or more points, right click and then subdivide to add even more. There are all sorts of uses for this, I'm sure, so feel free to play around and see what you can come up with, and let me know if you have any good ideas. For this project, we want to make a nice thick bundle of hair, so we'll just add a few ridges to one side of our circle. You can come back and edit this later, so don't worry about it too much, but try to avoid any overhangs or very fine detail. Next, we'll give it a taper. Head back to the path, and in edit mode again, select just the end point. From here, we can scale just this part of the path by hitting Alt-S. Go ahead and scale down both ends until we have a nice little hair lozenge. Now we can take that and move it into position on our model. By moving each node independently, we can work it into a nice little swoop. If you don't like the direction of the ridges, you can press Ctrl T to twist it into position. Once you're happy with that bundle, press Shift D to duplicate it and get started on the next one. If you need a little more length in your strand to, say, get over an ear, you can always extrude from the end point or subdivide it in the middle. Then we can just keep this up, following our reference and the shape of the head all around the model. 
Now, since this was my first time trying this method, I wasn't too careful about overlaps or gaps at this point, but I definitely recommend being a little more cautious than I was here. For the Huntress, I wanted to make a ponytail. So once the head was covered, I modeled out a quick little hairband, covered up those loose ends, and got to work on the poofy bit. Like I said, expert. This was a bit trickier, since I didn't have so much geometry to follow, but I think it looks pretty good. And with that, the actual sculpting is pretty much finished, but there were still a few more things I had to do to get it ready for printing. Remember how I wasn't too worried about little gaps or pockets? Well, my plan was to join all these different strands together and then remesh it into a single object. This would make it much safer to print, but it did turn out to be a bit more of a headache than I had thought at first. To do this, I had to convert the paths to geometry. Once that's done, you can sculpt them, remesh them, just like a regular object, but you lose the ability to modify the path, so save this till you're pretty confident in the shape of your hair. Also, to get a nice clean remesh, you need to make sure the ends are covered, so before you convert to geometry, make sure to check that fill caps button. Otherwise, you end up with something like this. Eventually, after a lot of tweaking and problem solving, I did end up with a single solid piece, and I was pretty pleased. This is definitely the most hair-like hair that I've made so far, but, and it's a pretty big but, that's just how it looks on screen. Once I set out to get everything supported and printed, I realized just how thin and tiny I had made those strands. And even though I did get the hair to print, the details are so small that on my printer, they kind of just blur together anyway. They are there though, which means I think I'm on the right track. For my next miniature, I'll be sure to keep each bundle a bit thicker, and with fewer, deeper ridges. And to be honest, this has me thinking about the proportions of my miniatures in general. So, I'll also be paying extra attention to the printability and paintability of all those details moving forward. What do you think? Does this look like too much detail for a miniature, or maybe not enough? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to grab your own copy of this character, you can find the Scav Huntress, along with the rest of her crew, over on MyMiniFactory.com. Plus, for the next week or so, if you'd like to save 50% on all my minis, you can use the discount code down in the description below. So, happy holidays everyone, and I'll see you next year.